Absolutely, we have a special guest. This special guest is Archbishop of Telmesos, Job Getcha, and we can call him uh, Job, uh, Archbishop Job. So what a privilege to have you. You are uh, with Zoom from Paris. Welcome. Thank you. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, absolutely. <laughs> this is the formula that uh, the Orthodox are using uh, worldwide when it is uh, Easter, because for, for you guys, Easter will be in about a month. We're going to talk about that. So, uh, dear Archbishop Job, uh, could you tell us why, why the resurrection is so important in the Orthodox Church and, and for you personally? Well, uh, the Orthodox Church, with, uh, which claims to be faithful to its tradition through the 2,000 years of history of Christianity, to be faithful from the experience of the very first apostles of Christ, remembers uh, very, um, very well the words of St. Paul, the apostle, in his first epistle to the Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 14. If Christ is not risen, then our preaching is worthless and your faith is worthless. Uh, in the Orthodox Church, the faith in the risen one, in the risen Christ, is the very foundation of our belief, of our Christian life. And this is why the resurrection, actually the, the feast of Pascha, as we call the, the Easter, is really the feast of feasts. It's really the center of the liturgical year. Uh, all the life of the Christian, all the life of the faithful, of the believer, is uh, based on that experience, uh, on that faith, uh, on that celebration. Actually, this greeting that we share, Christ is risen, uh, is the way we greet each other, not only on the day of Easter, uh, but also throughout the period, the Paschal period, which goes until Pentecost. But we have a holy man who lived in Russia in the 19th century. His name is Saint Seraphim of Sarov. He claimed that Christians should greet each other this way throughout the year. And actually, when he greeted people uh, throughout the year, he used to say, when encountering someone, he used to say, my joy, Christ is risen. Beautiful. Um, for me, personally, uh, the resurrection of Christ uh, gives me not only a meaning, not only an orientation to my life, but also gives me hope. Uh, for us, Orthodox uh, the resurrection is connected to the crucifixion. Sure. The cross and the empty tomb are not separable. Absolutely. It's like two faces of a coin. And therefore, uh, when we encounter the risen one, we actually encounter the crucified one. Remember when the risen Christ appears to Thomas, what does he say to Thomas? He says, look at my wounds, put your hand in my wound that was uh, here on my on my right side and not be unbeliever but believe um, for us uh, all the trials that we encounter in life um, temptations uh, difficulties uh, illness or even death uh, are, are always um, uh, healed by this belief in the resurrection because we believe that after these trials will come the resurrection after this uh, temporal life uh, we will have access to the eternal life uh, through the gift which is given to us through the risen one thank you archbishop you've touched uh, upon this in your last answer when you said that resurrection means hope to you personally so what is that meaning and how does it impact your everyday life, what the resurrection is? Well, uh, as I said, each time when I encounter any trial, because life is never easy, 
uh, we have we go through many difficulties in our life at different level on a personal level on a family level uh, or also uh, trials as a society as a global society for example uh, the world has been impacted now throughout one year through this terrible pandemic uh, which has uh, generated uh, illness uh, and also caused the death of millions of people. Well, uh, all these trials are being transfigured, transformed uh, through our hope in the resurrection. We know that death is not the final word yes. uh, in this world, um, that uh, suffering is not uh, the end of our life, but something else, something better um, uh, awaits us after. Uh, we, uh, the Christian, uh, and this is something we believe, not only we believe, but this is something we, we, we live throughout our earthly life. The Christian, in the Orthodox perspective, is someone who waits, someone mm. who awaits the resurrection. Wow. It's beautifully said. And I need to remember all the time that I meet you or uh, someone from the Orthodox Church to say, Christ is risen and wait for the answer, even he if it's not, risen. <laughs> not even if it's in the, in the season of, of Easter. So thank you for reminding us the centrality of the resurrection in, in our faith in general, Christian, as Paul said in the Bible, but also especially uh, on the Orthodox uh, liturgy and Orthodox practice. I have an, uh, another question for you. Uh, this year is quite specific. We have few weeks uh, of difference between Occidental Easter and Orthodox uh, yeah, or Eastern Orthodox uh, Easter. So uh, how come that we have so many weeks and, and not, not on, on the date, that, that's not exactly my question, but um, you have mentioned an article uh, just on your newsletter, personal newsletter, and it went a, a bit viral the last few days. Uh, the Vatican took that uh, and other uh, literature and website. Uh, tell us about what was the, the question that rose so much uh, interrogation and manifestation in newspaper? Yes, uh, it's true that um, not every year uh, all Christians do not celebrate Easter on the same date. Sometimes uh, we do celebrate it, fortunately, on the same day, but sometimes there is a one week difference, and this year we have one month difference. Um, the reason is because the Orthodox use the Julian calendar to determine the date of Pascha, of Easter. And at the moment, the Julian calendar um, has a 13 days delay. Um, and as you know, uh, the, the Easter is not a fixed uh, celebration. Every year it, it varies uh, because it's the Sunday which follows the full moon after the spring equinox. And uh, depending when the full moon falls and how do you determine the spring equinox, well, we will have a, a different date. Sure. And uh, because uh, of the, we use the Julian calendar, uh, the full moon, which was a few days ago, you should have observed it. It was beautiful. Uh, well, was <laughs> according to the Julian calendar, was not the the full moon of the spring, because spring will start on in a few days. Yeah. On uh, on the third, uh, I mean, uh, spring is uh, was actually today, and uh, okay. according to the Julian calendar, and we have to wait the uh, the next full moon uh, for the the celebration of uh, eastern um, pascha nevertheless uh, you see uh, this julian calendar does not correspond to the reality to the astronomic reality and the decision of the council of nicaea in 325 at the beginning of the fourth century was actually um, uh, looking at astronomic data. And uh, I wrote an article a few weeks ago 
uh, stating that uh, in 2025, we will celebrate the 1,700 years of the Council of Nicaea. Wow. And perhaps this would be a good occasion to uh, look uh, on, to reflect what we are actually doing and uh, try to be faithful, remain faithful, not only to the principle of Nicaea, but also to, uh, uh, it would be a good occasion to consider uh, a reform, a reformation of the calendar that uh, would be more accurate to the astronomic data. Um, there were, uh, in the Orthodox Church, um, this, is, this was already, it's not something new, because uh, already in, two, in 1902, uh, in the, at the beginning of the last century, uh, the Patriarch of Constantinople, Joachim III, uh, suggested uh, that Orthodox should consider um, the possibility of uh, have a more accurate calendar. And the same was suggested by the encyclical of the Ecumenical Patriarchate of Constantinople of 1920, uh, calling all the Christian churches everywhere, not only to form a society of, church, of churches, which would become later the famous World Council of Churches, Correct. but was also calling for a common calendar, was also coming, uh, calling for a common celebration of all Christian feasts. So this was in mind uh, already uh, for one century. Absolutely. And in 1977, uh, in Geneva, in Chambézy, we had a meeting of Orthodox astronomers mm. in order to prepare um, reform of the calendar and also a, a reform for the, the dates of Pascha. Unfortunately, up to this day, no official decision was made by the fullness of the Orthodox Church. For that, we would need to gather in a council. We had a council in 2016, but uh, some Orthodox decided not suggested not to discuss this question because mm. they feel that uh, people were not enough prepared. And I have also to mention that the World Council of Churches in 1997 in Aleppo also reflected on a common uh, date for Pascha, and they suggested to remain faithful to the principle uh, that was formulated at the Council of Nicaea, but to use the most accurate astronomic data of today. Wonderful. Thank you very much for those uh, uh, thoughts. And um, yeah, um, Thank what, you very what should much, we do? Archbishop, <laughs> I, I hadn't myself realized there was such a, a time difference between uh, how Christians celebrate the Easter. And I think that we would call upon all our viewers to show curiosity, curiosity and interest and see how other churches are celebrating Easter at this time. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you again, Archbishop Job. And